friends in this video we will study the loss of charge method which is used for the measurement of high resistances high resistances are those resistances which are of the order greater than 100 kilo ohms or 0.1 mega ohms so let us start with our topic <music> as I have said that these are uh, resistances which are of the order greater than 100 kilo ohms or 0.1 mega ohm they are categorized as the high resistance There are various examples of high resistances like insulation resistance of cables and machines and also the uh, high resistance circuits like vacuum tubes they will also have high resistance in them leakage resistance of the capacitors volume resistivity and surface resistivity of a material all these are examples of high resistances. Now there are various methods for the measurement of high resistance like direct deflection method, loss of charge method, Megar method and Megohm method. Here we will study the loss of charge method. In the loss of charge method, the unknown resistance which we want to measure that is connected in parallel with the capacitor and an electrostatic voltmeter. So voltmeter, it measures the voltage across the resistance okay and uh, through the readings of the voltage and the current we will measure the unknown resistance first the volt uh, the capacitor it is allowed to charge through a voltage that is uh, uh, battery is connected and through the battery the capacitor it is allowed to be charged after that when the capacitor is charged to some voltage then the battery will be disconnected and capacitor is allowed to discharge up through this unknown resistance okay so the relationship of the discharge or the loss of charge in the capacitor through that we can calculate the unknown resistance that is why this method is called loss of charge method because here we are studying the charging and discharging of a capacitor capacitor to some specific voltage so the circuit for this loss of charge method is we are having a capacitor unknown resistance is there capacitor is connected in parallel with this unknown resistance then we have an electrostatic voltmeter which is used to measure the voltage across the resistor and the capacitor then we have a switch over here this switch is used to connect or disconnect this battery which is providing the emf to the capacitor Now when this switch is closed then this capacitor C it is allowed to be charged to some voltage V okay. Now after that this switch is open when this switch is open the battery is disconnected from the circuit and this capacitor it is allowed to discharge through this unknown resistance and this voltmeter it is measuring the charging and the discharging voltage across the capacitor.
Now this charging and discharging of the capacitor that can be expressed in the form of an uh, expression. So the terminal voltage which is obtained across the capacitor during the discharging of the capacitor that is expressed as capital V that is the voltage of the battery which is equal to small v that is the reading of the voltmeter exponential of minus t by cr t is the time taken for the capacitor to get completely discharged okay so v is the emf of the battery and small v is the voltmeter reading. So there is a relationship between the discharging voltage and the EMF of the battery and here we are having the that expression. So using that expression we can find out the ratio capital V by small v equals to exponential of minus t by cr. If we draw the graph for it, then the capacitor will be charged to that voltage, to some voltage V and then the discharging is done. So this discharging is in the form of a decreasing exponential. Okay, so this is the decreasing potential in this way the voltage will be or the capacitor will be discharged. Now through this expression we can find out the insulation resistance that is capital R. So from that expression capital V upon small v is equals to exponential minus T by CR we can find out the value of the insulation resistance R and it is equal to T upon C log to the base E capital V by small v. When we calculate this it is equal to 0 0.4343 T divided by C log to the because when we are converting this log to the base E to the base 10, it will be like this. Okay. So, through this formula, we can find out the value of the insulation resistance by using the loss of charge method. Now, if the resistance R which we are measuring, it is very large as compared to the value of that capacitor. So this whole uh, process, it becomes very time consuming. Okay. And also errors can occur in it because uh, if more time is taken for the measurement, then there are some factors which can affect the value of the unknown resistance. So if the resistance is very large, the process becomes time consuming and instead of measuring this voltage across the capacitor what we measure we measure the difference between the voltages So the difference between the voltages that is capital V minus small v that is calculated. So the formula now it will becomes So the formula now changes to 0.4343T divided by C log to the base 10 capital V upon capital V minus E where E is the small difference. Okay. So 
this is the new formula for measuring the unknown resistance to this method now this loss of charge method it is applicable for the measurement of high resistance now uh, there are some cases in which the leakage resistance of the capacitor which we are using in this method that leakage resistance is of uh, a value which is comparable to the value of the unknown resistance so when the leakage resistance of the capacitor is also very high then we use a different arrangement for the measurement of the unknown resistance So the loss of charge method it measures the resistances it requires that the capacitor which is used in the measurement that capacitor should have a leakage resistance which is of very high value as compared to the value of the unknown resistance so that no leakage currents are produced. So in that discharging we have to consider that leakage resistance also of the capacitor. Okay, so here we have the two resistance. One is the resistance of the one is the leakage resistance of the capacitor, and another is the unknown resistance. So suppose that let L one is the leak uh, R one is the So here R1 is the leakage resistance of the capacitor and R dash is the equivalent resistance of R and the R1. So if we write the value of this equivalent resistance because R and R1 they are connected in parallel with each other. So R dash will be equals to R into R1 upon R plus R1. That will be the equivalent resistance. Now suppose again the switch is closed and the capacitor it is allowed to charge to a suitable voltage V which is provided by this battery. So when the switch is closed the uh, capacitor will be charged to the voltage V. Now the switch is open and the capacitor it is allowed to get discharge. So in that case the discharge equation as what we have written earlier that discharge equation will become as instead of the unknown resistor now we are having that equivalent resistance connected here this switch is also closed this is closed r and r1 they are replaced by this equivalent resistance r dash so capacitor is going to get discharged through this r dash equivalent resistance so equivalent resistance is given by the same equation 0.4343t divided by c log to the base 10 capital V by small v okay discharge equation has changed and this R dash is the equivalent resistance that is R R1 upon R plus R1 now in the second case this switch is open and this switch is also open and capacitor it is allowed to get 
discharge through this leakage resistance R1. R1 is the leakage resistance of the capacitor. So now the capacitor it is going to get discharged through this. Uh, in the first case it was discharging through that equivalent resistance. In the second case it is discharging through this leakage resistance only. So the discharge equation it will be changed it will now be R1 equals to 0 0.4343 T divided by C log capital V by small v. Okay. So from these two equation and the equation R dash equals to R R1 upon R plus R1. We can get the value of the leakage resistance of the capacitor also and the unknown resistance also. So this loss of charge method when the leakage resistance of the capacitor it is very high as compared to this uh, uh, unknown resistance which we want to measure then we are going to consider this leakage resistance also we cannot neglect it and uh, the first equation which we obtained earlier that is used in the case when the leakage resistance is not so high and it can be neglected. So this is the loss of charge method which is used for the measurement of high resistances which are of the order of 100 kilo ohms or greater than 0.1 mega ohm. Okay. So I hope that this topic measurement of high resistances using loss of charge method is clear to you. Thank you.